Everybody that knows me knows that I am a huge fan of the James Bond franchise. And although I definitely critique the franchise too in my videos, I'd like to think that for the most part, my channel is essentially a love letter to the franchise. A passion I just never get tired of. But of course, I am also first to admit, not every aspect of these movies are worth writing home about. There are definitely horrible moments in the series that are either really tacky, plain annoying or just cringeworthy to watch. So I compiled a list of the 10 moments in Bond films I find to be the worst. Before we start though, I always like to give my honorable and dishonorable mentions and you'd be surprised that this did not make my top 10, but the double taking pigeon in Moonraker is definitely an infamous moment in the series of just being so bad. However, the reason for me this did not make the list is the entire sequence is just so bad it becomes good. Moonraker is not hiding its tone under the table. It's over the top and it just goes for it. A secret agent riding a hovercraft gondola on the St. Marco Square in Venice and all the bystanders are just performing comedy after comedy. And the double taking pigeon, to me, is just part of that sequence. It's bad, but the reason for me it's a missed out on the list is, well, I can at least laugh about it. The dishonorable mention in this case would mean it isn't bad because it's not part of the absolute worst, if you get me. So I just translate it to actually not so bad. And that has to be the moment Bond is dressed up as a clown in Octopussy. This always gets critiqued to be just plain stupid. I mean, can you imagine any of the other Bond actors dressed up as a clown? They're right, but what makes it work for me is this serious tone that goes with this whole sequence. This is not just a comedic moment for the purpose of comedy. Bond needs to prevent the detonation of a nuclear bomb planted in the circus. And although it's silly and it really makes no sense for him to even put on all the face paint that fast, the costume was needed as a cover. What also makes it work for me is the dark opening of 009 running away from the knife throwing twins in the forest. We know he didn't make it. And now 007 is in the same costume and we know he will have to face the same sort of dangers. It's his turn now. With that said though, let's now get to the 10 that I think do deserve to be on the list. Aston Martin call it the vanquish, we call it the vanish. You know, the invisible car in Die Another Day often gets pointed out as the worst thing that ever happened in the Bond series. I wouldn't go that far. Yes, it's completely unrealistic and it makes no logical sense despite them trying to come up with a scientific explanation. It's still pretty stupid. But I'm actually pretty willing to suspend my disbelief with it. You see, we've also had a car turn into a submarine, firing rockets to helicopters from the bottom of the ocean. And everybody thinks that thing is the business, which it is. So I can kind of get into this one. What kills it for me though, is Bond's mission. He needs to go to Iceland of all places. He is driving in the snow. Being invisible adds nothing. You can still leave freaking tire tracks. That for me is why it's one of the worst in the series. I admit though, that car chase between Bond and Zhao on the ice, still a very cool sequence that somewhat redeems the car's existence because damn, it is a really good looking car. Yes, the Tarzan yell in Octopussy. A brief stupid moment in an otherwise very enjoyable Bond film. The Roger Moore films often seem to have this. Something that just kills the mood. Like the Beach Boys song in the opening of A View to a Kill. It's just put there 
for a cheap laugh and nothing more. And it's not even funny. The same holds for this moment. It always takes me out of the film and I always just cringe. It's such a shame because this whole jungle sequence, it's pretty good. This never happened to the other fella. This to me is one of the most stupid fourth wall breaking jokes in the series that I just wish was never made as a joke. Why couldn't Bond just make some double innuendo joke instead like, now that's a cougar I'd like to ride. But no, Lazenby is clearly referring to Sean Connery as the other fellow and then looks directly into the camera too. It just takes you straight out of the movie. Not only does this spark the ridiculous codename theory that we can Bond fans like to support, it's also just cringeworthy. Of course fans try to repair the damage by stating he could be referring to Prince Charming from Cinderella as he's holding the shoes and this never happened to that dude, but he also just looks straight into the camera, like, did you get it? The damage has already been done. I know the story behind this line of Lazenby often saying this line on set, referring to Connery, but having fun on set shouldn't have to be shoehorned into the movie because, you know, none of us were actually present at the set to get the joke. What were they thinking? Gombawa. Turning James Bond Japanese in order to fit his cover in Japan may sound great on paper or in the novel, but turning a six foot Scotsman into an Asian simply does not work on the screen. Like, at all. It's just so laughably bad, and not only does it look completely unconvincing, it adds nothing to the plot. Zero. Even the movie itself forgets about it. Bond is still in his disguise as he's climbing the volcano, but later on, his hair and look is completely back to normal when he's face to face with Blofeld. So, what was the point? Why get married to a Japanese woman for a cover that's going to walk around with a gun in the villain lair in her bikini anyway? Gee, wh what Japanese wife would do that? And why sit through that makeup and prosthetics process and clearly signaling the joke to us of Bond's chest hair that needs to be shaven in order to look Japanese? So why is Connery's chest hair completely back as the volcano erupts? Why does a hollowed out volcano even have lava? And why does... Alright, you, you know, you get the point. It's just plain stupid. By the way, I'm not just any old double O. I'm double O seven. You probably thought they'd retire it. Lashana Lynch's character Nomi getting the 007 number in No Time to Die served no real purpose in the story other than being a political statement to the outside world to provoke media attention for tabloids and people with no interest in the franchise to trigger reactions like these. The name's Lashana, Lashana Lynch. I am so excited about it. this. Apparently Lashana is our new 007. There was no reason to do this. Sure, you could argue, what does it matter? Bond's number gets reinstated later on in the movie anyway. Which is true, but really, she could have been any other 00 number and the plot would have gone exactly the same as it did now. There was no reason to take the beloved 007 number that is just synonymous with James Bond other than to say, look, we got a strong independent woman of color as our new 007. The media loved it. Even if some fans think of this differently than I do, I can safely say no Bond fan had this decision on their wish list.
You're not thinking that. I sure am, boy. Never heard of evil can evil. The man with the golden gun signature corkscrew stunt still is one of the most impressive stunts ever pulled off in the franchise. And the slide whistle sound effect still is one of the most infamously bad sounds to ruin this brilliant stunt. Just why? Why did they have to ruin such an impressive stunt for a cheap laugh? I never liked it as a kid and I never liked it as an adult. It's just such a shame. I'm pretty sure even John Barry regretted this decision in retrospect. I truly wonder how the stuntman must have felt seeing his stunt on the big screen, putting in all that effort, balls and energy into perfecting this only for it to be butchered by a stupid sound effect. What a shame. I could probably make a whole top 10 of just the worst moments in Diamond Saw Forever alone. Blofeld cloning himself, the tacky elephant in the circus casino, the mousetrap in Bond's pocket, the moon buggy. But one of the worst moments for me in the entire film is when Blofeld uses his laser satellite. I mean, just look at this. It looks like a complete B-movie. This Chinese soldier on fire, it's just so cringeworthy. And don't give me this, oh it's a movie from 1971, look at From Russia With Love, a movie that had only a 2 million dollar budget and came out a decade before this film. There were actual people there on fire, the explosions were real. This looks like some hobbyist filmmaker on YouTube produced this with no budget. And I've seen those types of videos look even better than this crap. I just can't help but feel completely embarrassed when watching this stuff as a Bond fan. Well, 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 look what the cat dragged in. Speaking of Diamonds Are Forever, topping the bill for me as the worst moment in that film is Blofeld in drag. I mean, what? This is supposed to be Bond's arch nemesis. The big one, the one responsible of the death of his wife in the previous movie. Remember his sinister faceless introduction in From Russia With Love? His menace, his presence, how on earth did that character go from that to this? Why? There's just no excuse. What were they thinking when they made this? Can you imagine any other male Bond villain being depicted as this? It's still one of the worst, most stupidly tacky moments in the entire series for me. Just for the sake of a cheap laugh. For a very long time, the kite serving tsunami in Die Another Day had to be the worst moment in the series for me. What puts this over the Blofeld in drag for me is, I am pretty sure they were that serious with this stuff. Even back in 2002, already the CGI just looked so dated in this sequence. A series famous for its live action stunts reduced to this computer generated nonsense. It's even worse that the movie opens up with a genuine serving sequence that is pretty well done. It's like two completely different movies. I'm sure Brosnan worked hard standing in front of that green screen and stuff, but even he reflected how stupid this was in retrospect. Right Brosnan, we're gonna do kite surfing tsunamis today. <laughs> kite surfing a tsunami. <laughs> oh, it's It's almost been one year since No Time To Die was released and yeah, I can now safely say this has got to be the worst moment in the series for me. 
Sure, you could say it triggers more emotion and it's pretty ballsy to kill Bond off, but overall, I'm just still so gutted by this creative decision that not a single Bond fan on Earth was asking for. You could argue the CGI wave is just so much worse in its effects and at least this is all filmed well. The soundtrack is emotional, it's a heavy moment and stuff, but at least the CGI wave is over before you know it. This whole ending defined a pretty decent Bond film for me. You would forget that Felix Leiter got killed in the same movie, and so did Blofeld, and that Bond had a daughter, because all of that is dwarfed by doing this one moment. Bond is supposed to be the man that always finds a way, saving us all, the embodiment of survival I'd like to say. This was always the thing you could count on with Bond. You have a nasty habit of surviving. Know what they say about the fittest? Why can't you just be a good boy and die? You first. You appear with the tedious inevitability of an unloved season. Now for the filmmakers to take away that fantasy aspect of Bond, not only in the franchise, because you know, Bond can be rebooted, but also what Bond means to the world, his position in society, so to speak. I did not tear up in cinema, I just was left empty, unable to process this choice and now, almost a year later, I can safely say, yeah, this truly was just a gut punch, uncalled for. I am aware that some Bond fans do like this ending and that this is certainly the most polarizing choice the filmmakers ever made. You could credit them for it too, but it's just not what any of us have been asking for. Those were my top 10 worst moments in the Bond franchise. Obviously it's required me to be quite negative throughout the whole video, but I hope you enjoyed it regardless. Let's go back to celebrating our beloved franchise soon again. Leave your own lists in the comments below, like and subscribe, and if you want to go the extra mile in supporting the channel, please also take a look at my Patreon page. See you guys in the next video.